the Nazis controlled Germany or how Hitler created a dictatorship. Um, it's also it's important to remember that it's not just about how he removed political opposition. There's also other forms of opposition within Germany. And one of the ones that the Nazis and Hitler were most concerned about was the church. Now, uh, that's unsurprising, really, when you think about what those two groups stand for. The Nazis, you know, they stand for um, violence, strength, and racial superiority, the Aryan race. So, um, violence, strength, and racial superiority, whereas the church stands for toleration, peace, and respect for all. Now, those are two diametrically opposed sets of beliefs. So it's hardly surprising that the Nazis are going to come into conflict with the church. Now, in Germany in the 1930s, essentially we're talking about two types of churches, the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. Now, the first one to think about is the Catholic Church. Now, um, there are four reasons, sorry, four reasons why Hitler disliked the Catholic Church. Firstly... Catholics in Germany owed their primary allegiance to the Pope, not to Hitler and the Nazis. But yet what Hitler was trying to create was somewhere they had complete control of the state, of the people. Yet you have this great big chunk of German society that looks to the Pope in Rome for guidance, as opposed to Hitler in Berlin and the Nazis. Um, secondly, the Catholics had their own schools. Now they taught very different values to those... Um, espoused by the Nazi state schools. Remember, the Nazis are for um, violence, strength, and racial superiority, whereas the church is for tolerance, peace, and respect for all. Now, thirdly, the Catholic Church has its own youth groups, youth movements, um, again, that preach different values to those preached by the Nazi youth groups, the Hitler Youth, the League of German Maidens. And fourthly, the Catholics supported a party in, in German politics called the Centre Party. Now, what Hitler wanted to do was replace and remove the Centre Party. So there are four very good reasons why Hitler dislikes the Catholics. However, to start with, he doesn't remove the Catholic Party, or Catholics, sorry. What he does is he signs an agreement with the Pope in Rome in July 1933. Now, this is known as the Concordat, capital C, C-O-N-C-O-R-D-A-T, Concordat. Um, and it's agreement with the Pope. Now what he says, what it agrees is that the, um, the church will stay out of politics. Okay? And that German bishops will actually swear an oath of loyalty to the Nazi regime. Now in your textbook that you guys have got, the actual oath is on, oath is on page 52. And it's basically saying, look, you know, we're going to support what the Nazis are saying. Now in return for this... What, the, what, the, what Hitler agreed to do was to allow freedom of worship for Catholics. And secondly, he promised not to interfere with Catholic schools. Now, if we've learned anything about Hitler so far, it's that what he says and what he does are often two very different things. Unsurprisingly, Hitler breaks his promises to the Catholic Church. In fact, within a couple of months. Firstly, what he does is uh, many Catholic priests were harassed uh, and even arrested. And these were the people that were criticising the Nazis. So they were um, harassed, arrested and often sent to the concentration camps. Um, secondly, Hitler interfered with the Catholic schools um, and eventually even abolished and closed them. The third thing he did was he then abolished the Catholic youth movements because they were kind of a, an alternative, a threat to his youth movements that he was creating under the Nazis. And fourthly, monasteries were closed down. So four things that Hitler does to destroy or, or control the Catholic Church. Arrest it, arrests and harasses priests, sends them, send them to the concentration camps, closes Catholic schools, closes Catholic youth movements and closes monasteries. Now by 1937, the Pope in Rome, Pope Pius XI, um, actually started to criticise the Nazi regime. He realised, hang on, this is not really the deal we had, and this guy is not a very nice bloke. Now, this is called the With Burning Anxiety Statement. It's the first time the Pope and the Catholic Church openly criticise Hitler. Um, however, that's not to say that it was only the Pope that criticised him. Um, what you have are an example of two or three Catholic leaders, or, or bishops and priests, um, who criticised them. Now, the first one, um, Cardinal Initza. Um, I always kind of think some guy going, in it, 
for, for him. So but Cardinal Initzer, I-N-N-I-T-Z-E-R, um, and he preached anti-Nazi sermons. So what happened was the SS paid him a nice friendly visit, which actually wasn't very friendly. And they smashed up his church. They um, beat up the clergy there. Uh, they picked one of them up and threw him out of a window until he, so he broke both his legs uh, as a warning to say, you know, look, be careful what you say because we're going to come and get you. And as we learn also, there was no comeback. It's not like um, Cardinal Initzer could go to the police and complain because the police were Nazis. He couldn't go to the law courts because the law courts were controlled by the Nazis. Um, and a second Catholic leader who openly criticised the Nazis was a guy called Bishop Galen, G-A-L-E-N, Galen. Uh, and he criticised the Nazis throughout the 30s. Uh, now, the Nazis actually didn't stop him because he was so popular, they feared that if they did, there'd be this huge backlash. Okay? So that's the Hitler and the Catholics. Now, as I said earlier, there's a, a second group a religious group in Germany that Hitler wanted to control. And that group is the Protestants. Okay? That's not me going peace, by the way. That's me saying it's the second um, um, religious group. Now, initially, some Protestants were extremely supportive of the Nazis because the Nazis had crushed the communists and the communists were a bit of a threat to organised religion. Um, and these became known as German Christians. Right? Um, they were led by a guy called Ludwig Müller. <coughs> Excuse me, M U L L E R, Ludwig Müller. Now he became the Reich Bishop in September 1933, and he became the Bishop of the Reich Church, or the German Christian Movement. Okay? Those three things are actually the same thing: German Christians, German Christian Movement, and the Reich Church. Now the Reich Church is a bit freaky actually, because um, Hitler insisted that on the altar at the front of the church was a copy of Mein Kampf, his book My Struggle, and a sword. As you can tell from those two things, the message that Muller and the Reich Church is going to be, are going to be espousing, saying to their congregation, is going to be a little different to the traditional Protestant um, sermon and may not be espousing the idea of tolerance and peace and love thy neighbour. Um, pastors who were Protestants who um, supported the Nazis were allowed to carry on as before. That was absolutely fine. However, not all Protestants did. Uh, the most famous of these guys is a guy called Pastor um, Martin Niemuller. Muller, Niemuller. Like I said, my German accent's particularly poor. N I E M O L L E R. Niemuller. He was a World War One submarine commander, you know, a massive hero of the First World War. Not a, not a, not a, not a scared man. And in 1933, he set up the P E L, which is the Pastors Emergency League. Um, and it was, its purpose was to campaign against the Nazis um, and they set up the confessional church as an alternative to the Reich Church. Um, now in 1937 Niemöller was sent to a concentration camp um, and the PEL was banned as was the confessional church. Now Niemöller spent 1938 to 1945 in a concentration camp purely for his religious beliefs and daring to criticise the, 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 the Nazis openly. Another Protestant um, clergyman who um, preached against the Nazis, a guy called Dietrich Bonhoeffer, B O N H O W F E R, Bonhoeffer. Um, and he was stopped by the Gestapo from preaching anti Nazi sermons in 1937. And what he did was he then kind of met up secretly with some anti Hitler German leader, uh, not, uh, army leaders, um, and, and plotted against Hitler, and he helped Jews to escape. Now, eventually, he was arrested in 1942, and he was hanged, sadly a few days before the end of the war, in 1945. Um, now, obviously, there are people within the church who stood up to Hitler, or there were people who stood up to Hitler. But, on the whole, by 1937, Hitler now controlled the Reichstag, the Nazi party, the army, the police, the law courts, and he'd removed the church as a potential source of opposition. Okay? Either through signing the Concordat and then taking over the Catholic youth movements, etc., or by setting up the Reich Church. Um, they, in fact, the Nazis also set up, interestingly enough, an alternative to organised religion called the, um, the Pagan Church, or the German Faith Movement. Now, what that means is um, it's a non-Christian-based religion. And what it does is it, instead it base, it's based around the worship of the sun. If you've seen those guys at Salisbury and places like the Druids and things like that, it's a bit like that. Um, but it was just an attempt by the Nazis to give an alternative to Christian religion to the Germans. 
All right. Um, it's quite an interesting period, quite an interesting topic to study. Make sure you're aware there are two types of church. Initially, they start off supporting um, the, the Nazis, and then all, eventually, as people become more and more aware of the terrible nature of the Nazi regime, you get more and more opposition, but the Nazis are able to crush that using the Gestapo and the SS and the law courts. All right. Thank you.